Hey guys and gals, we are back with episode three of Morph Market in Action. Today, I'm excited to talk to Ahmad Osman, aka Ozzy of Ozzy Boyds. Ozzy was the originator of the amazing Orange Dream Gene, which has been one of the most significant genes in the ball python hobby. He has perfected the art of producing cutting edge combos and is always working to improve himself and to help others. I think you will learn a lot as we dive into the Morph Market platform with Ozzy and load his breeding animals into the animal manager so that we can explore breeding plans and clutch creation. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And let us know in the comments below if you're enjoying this and what you'd like to see next. I created Morph Market in 2015 because I found the existing online services to be inadequate for the reptile hobby and wanted something better. Since then, it's been a crazy journey as Morph Market has grown to become the online platform for the reptile community. Some of my best experiences have been meeting with breeders and keepers to learn how we can better serve them. Morph Market in Action is a video series where I invite you into these conversations. Together with some amazing guests, we will dive into the platform and learn how to use it most effectively. Along the way, you'll get to meet some of our favorite people and learn from their successes. Ozzy, it's great to have you on today as somebody who has been really successful in the breeding community, is business savvy, and has also just given a lot back to the community in terms of resources and information. So thank you for coming on with me. Appreciate the opportunity. Happy to help. Could you just start us off? You know, I'm sure you've told the story a million times, but just briefly, could you tell us how did you get into breeding snakes? Honestly, I was just uh, I was just looking to pick up a, a small um, constrictor snake. I never owned ball pythons when I was a kid. Uh, I had boa constrictors. I had corn snakes, etc. I never owned a ball python. I love boas, but I wanted something a little smaller. So I was looking for a small constrictor, and I was looking at bloods, and I was looking at ball pythons, and I fell in love with the ball python. Um, so I went out and picked up a ball python, but during my research, I noticed that people were breeding them and starting to produce albinos and piebalds and stuff like that. And I just started looking into it, and then I started to find albino boas, et cetera, and I just got hooked. I just got hooked from there. And it was uh, totally by accident. I never intended to have a business. I just wanted to own a couple of snakes and just got sucked in, man. <laughs> <laughs> and how many, how long ago was that? I want to say that was probably around 1999. So I came along way later, you know, in 2014. <laughs> yeah. 2014 and I remember I talked to you pretty early on and you were real yeah. positive, you know, as somebody who was already successful, but you were looking at this marketplace being created that really helps it helps everybody but it, it really helps the small yeah. guy because it helps them build a brand it helps them have a presence be reached by people yes. and stuff you were already successful so some people in your position might have said yo man this thing this is going to take away some of my glory it's going to create more competition but you never had that attitude you did not have a zero-sum game mentality can you tell us about that? I look at it by by leveling the playing field and allowing the small breeder to come up and to be able to produce animals and sell animals. I knew that that would help grow the industry and it would, in the long term, it would benefit me as well. I kind of realized that um, very early on and I knew it was the hobbyist that was this industry. In order for the industry to continue to grow, those hobbyists had to be successful. As they say, you know, a rising tide lift all boats. It, that is very, very true within a reptile industry. So when I saw what you were trying to build, I supported it 100% for those reasons. I read that you said in one of your blogs, you said, I realized a long time ago that there's enough room for everybody to succeed in this hobby. It's a great statement. It's true. And it embodies your attitude, which is a really healthy one that our community needs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, like I said, this industry, it's so lucrative and, and, and we come in, we get such high prices and the market has stayed strong because we always have an influx of new breeders coming into the hobby. And that's why this market is so strong. That's why the profit margins are so high. And we're just scratching the surface. You know, 8 billion people in the world, quite a few of them would become snake breeders if they're exposed to it and they get to see what's involved. I mean, it's a really, really, really cool hobby. And you could do it on a small scale, medium scale, or you could do it on a large scale. You could really approach it in any way that accommodates your lifestyle or your desire, how much work you want to take on, et cetera. So it's a really cool hobby. And I think it's, it's the key is to keep it growing. 
as it continues to grow, everybody will benefit and everybody will profit. If we can just convince people not to be afraid of snakes, or at least certain kind of snakes, that's going to increase the, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, but the yeah. addressable market by about 200 X, because I think about 19 out of 20 yeah. people I meet are afraid of snakes to begin with. Exactly. And, and there's a lot of breeders who initially they were afraid of snakes. They were exposed to it and then they, you know, they would hold one and then they just fell in love. And, and then you have, you, you know, you just have people who are animal lovers, uh, who just love reptiles, et cetera. Like, um, Tom Barnhart, for instance, you know, I, I met Tom Barnhart. We were working together at a biotech company. I was on King Snake on the forums, you know, when we take a break, that's what I used to go to the computer room. That's what I would be doing. And he looked over my shoulder and he was like, Hey, I have a King Snake. And then I started exposing him to the ball pythons and now he's a ball python breeder. Um, so there's, there's countless stories like that. And there's a lot of people out there that have not been converted yet because they just haven't met you know, another hobbyist and they haven't been exposed to it. With social media and all of the activity with YouTube, et cetera, more and more people are getting exposed to it. So I think the hobby is going to continue to grow exponentially. So having already been well established as a breeder by 2014 and kind of Morph Market being post that, how has Morph Market helped you in your business, do you think? Morph Market has made it possible for other breeders to sell their wares, like produce animals and, and have a, a outlet to post and sell their animals and grow their businesses, which encourages them to continue to invest and grow their own collection. And that benefits me directly by, you know, of course, you know, people are going to come to me for some cutting cutting edge morphs and it just you know it increases my um my market other ways i i just i really love more morph market because it's very user friendly and there's a lot of features there that can help you not just list your animals but try to figure out what's the market price for an animal i always try to post animals based on market price so it, it's a it's a, a very cool platform uh, that allows you to easily filter and pull up a specific more for a specific set of genes and kind of get a feel for where stuff is selling. Uh, and it's been very helpful for that, um, especially when you're busy and you don't have a ton of time because otherwise you'll have prices all over the place and that creates market uncertainty and that in turn just it's not healthy for the industry as a whole. What's your process when you go to try to price an animal out? So for instance, if I made um, an orange dream hypo pied, I would go online and I would look for uh, uh, ads either available or sold. So I'll look for stuff that's for sale right now in the US and Canada, mm -hmm. and then I will sort by least expensive, and then I start from there. So I get a, I get a feel for what stuff is being listed at, um, what people are pricing stuff at. And then I go from there and I price my stuff accordingly. Certain, you know, certain, if you have an individual who is an unknown entity and they're pricing, you know, below market, I may not necessarily match their price. I may keep it high, but if it's a, if it's a well-known breeder, I'm going to list my, I'm going to list my stuff close to where they're at. And you probably get into a situation a lot of the time where you have animals. I mean, like this, we put this combo in, I mean, there's only 10 or 15 for sale, but you're, and you've got what? a third of them here. Mark's got a third of them. What's yeah. your pr process when you start to, do you start to peel off some genes or like maybe do het stuff or how do you soften the query up to, to explore the space? Because this is something I'm really interested yeah. because I know that people use Morph Market all day long for pricing and the search engine works well. But I want to build some more tools in to help get those comps even easier and faster. I will look like sometimes, like for instance, sometimes you won't have um, the exact genes. If I have a Mojave clown and I'm not seeing any Mojave clowns, I may pull up lesser clowns and see what lesser clowns are selling for or phantom mm -hmm. clowns. Something that's close to that gene mm -hmm. to give me an idea. The other thing is, you know, rarity. If something is very, very rare or unique, um, I may price it more. Another thing that I'll do, if nothing is for sale in that category under availability, I will click under, I would check for sold animals mm -hmm. or I may click all and then I'll, it, it'll show me what's been selling recently and what price they've been selling at. And that'll give me an, an idea of where to pr uh, price my animal. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that I do personally, and I don't know, I'm not like all other breeders are not going to operate from the same position as me, but certain animals I am willing to keep. So I'll mm -hmm. price them really, really high. If I know something has a lot of potential, like if I know mm -hmm. I have a male that I could pair with this female 
and I can make a $50,000 clutch, I may price her higher and just say, if she sells, she sells. If she doesn't, I'll use it to make a $50,000 clutch. That's the way I approach it. But this has been huge. It's been very, very helpful and saves me a lot of time when I'm sitting there and I'm cataloging. It's baby season. I'm busy. I'm cataloging. I got to take pictures and then I got to post ads. Uh, but before I post ads, I got to figure out where to price my stuff. And this has been very helpful. Yeah. Within the jeans and the traits, there's a few options here we can use to tweak our query as well. Oh, by the way, when we switched to sold, like you said, we had, I don't know, about 15 or so for sale. We have 21 sold, not a lot more sold yeah. than for sale. We can also look at on hold yeah. too, but can change availability. But when we can play with the genes in here, there's an option that says any trait form. And so that would be like if we put in pied, so it's homozygous pied by default. But if we said any trait form, now it's going to accept het pied as well. So this may be a little uh, broader. But okay. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. I didn't um, I didn't play around with that. There was there's a lot of features. Like whenever I sit down and I dig into it, I find something new. Um, <laughs> that's very helpful. I I probably didn't even know what that meant. Any trait form. Well, a lot of people don't. That's why I shared it. You can tap these tooltips and it'll give a little more explanation on what what it actually does. There's uh, now something that you have been able to do for years, but a lot of people didn't know. Let's say, okay, this this animal, we're going to say that has three genes in it. Okay, trait, well, three traits. So a lot of people wonder, how do I look at only animals with three traits? That's been possible for years, but people didn't get that because you got to kind of think, you got to kind of figure that out. So yeah. instead of that, if you put in no additional traits, it does exactly the yeah. same thing. That that should be the same in men yeah. of three. I've used, I've used that before. So we were counting all the genes before, but now we're going to say, let's count only visual recessives so if we say one to one one min one max one let's say we knock the hypo out yeah. and now we're going to say we want to but we still want a minimum of two visual recessives so now what we're seeing is piebald plus some other visual recessive at least at least plus orange stream and now we got uh 77 results yeah. sold. so one thing that i noticed when i was checking this out today you've got 1700 followers and that you know compared to some platforms that may not be a lot but yeah. but that that's because we haven't made a great deal of use of the following feature to date we're going to start yeah. using it more significantly but i want you to know that you are the currently as of today the sixth most followed breeder on morph market you're within 10 percent of top three so you're right there at the top. I cool. thought that's pretty cool because the other guys that are up there are guys that you, that were in the hobby when you started. You know, that's they had that much longer cool. to get going. So that was really cool. And then, you know, of course, you got all the badges. You've been a founding member supporting since the beginning. And then Trace founded. Now, we all know you founded Orange Stream. We can yeah. go over to Morphpedia and check that out and read some of the story. I think we might need you to fill this in a little bit more for us because uh, yeah, we all have – we, actually... we, we don't have as much history here as we could. Yeah, I actually have something written up. I know I talked to you years ago about it, and I actually wrote something up. It's on my it's on my desktop somewhere. I'll, I'll, I can I can cut and paste it and put it in there, or do I need to send it to you? Yeah, so you can either so the, if you were just anybody, you can click on here contribute or uh, click here to contribute feedback. It's going to go over to our forums where the actual source document is, and you could just using your Morph Market account, it's the same account. You can just come down here and say, hey, guys, my name's Ozzy. Yeah. And I don't know if you heard of me, but I, I came up with this. And here's the story. Boom, paste it in there. Anyway, you could reply right here and you could give us the story and then our editors will put it in. That's how anybody could get feedback that we would then consider for incorporation. But that's pretty sweet. So you got your badge there and then um, 200, over 260 ratings. Now, one thing I noticed is you have not made use of the testimonial feature. Mark did, but he didn't tell you about it because he wants... A little bit of an edge. <laughs> so we come over to your rating. I'll show you how to use this. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. This is a pretty, pretty uh, enthusiastic buy here. Call Ozzy Boyd's best quality. Okay. So I'm going to show you. If you go in here and view that rating, yeah. you can come down here and under other options, you can check this box, promote as testimonial. Uh, and there you go. You got a testimonial right there. And you can put like uh, five of them there at pro level. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you may or may, you that. may or may not like that. That may or may not suit your 
your brand. But you, <laughs> <laughs> he's excited though. You did a, you did a good job with him. Whatever you did, came on down. We got your listings, your collection, your offspring. So that's what we're going to get into today, and some pairings. As of this morning, you had three animals in your collection on Morph Market, meaning these are the not for sale animals. But that's what we're gonna we're gonna fix that today. And really, that by adding your not for sale animals to Morph Market is gonna unlock a bunch of the new features that we've been adding. I think you're aware of some of those features, but they would include um, the ability to, to create and manage your breeding plans and to publish them if you want to. Because I know you, yeah. well, all breeders, you know, keep some keep some of their cards. Uh, hidden the ability to record your offspring groups so your your clients can see the the lineage and see what you've been producing over the years lineage on your listings and then wait listings which is coming really soon so as you hear that list of features which of those sound most exciting to you um the feature to to, to be able to link parents uh to each listing would be beneficial because that that that's a pretty uh common inquiry that i usually get yeah that's great i mean people one another lineage now for you then you know maybe it doesn't raise the value of your ad as much but for somebody who's not as well known having that extra information there i think is a, a selling point but for you it's it's an indirect selling point because now okay your customers okay we don't have this today we do have the lineage the parents on ads now in the this sometime this year we want to add what we call animal transfer and so that's when someone buys an animal from you then it gets to transfer the records into theirs and then when they produce babies off an animal you sold them, their customers can see that that sire or dam or both was an Aussie Boyd's animal. And all of a sudden it raises the value of their animal. Yep, absolutely. Especially if it's like uh, certain lines, like the high intensity orange dream or something specific. And it, if it's a new breeder, um, that may not have, you know, name recognition, it, it will give them more credibility. It'll give that offspring more, uh, uh, credibility when people can see the lineage uh, that may be going back to somebody who's more established. So in order to do that, we got to first load your breeding animals into the system. And you shared with me your breeding plan for 2022. So we're going to look at last year. And yep. this was a this is a pretty intense plan. I like how you laid it out. You got your males, you organized by male, and your columns show the females. And there's a total of 250 animals in here, actually. So what we did is we just kind of put that in sequence. We got rid of, we just ignored the, the pairing part and we just yeah. filled out the template, the one that we're gonna have, we'll have it in the, in the description below. And uh, from your IDs, we derived the date of the year of birth, sex in, the title, and uh, your animal IDs. Now there were a couple, not a big deal. So we just all, I, what I did was just put a little dot one and a dot two next to them just to give them something unique because those IDs do have to be unique. Um, yep. But then, you know, as we've shown in the last couple of uh, Morph Market Action videos, we just take this data. I like to copy paste. You can do it. You could also export. I'm going to import it into this demo account instead. Yes. Okay, so I'm in a, a demo account right now. I'm going to show what that import would look like if we hadn't already done it. So I'm, I'm going to go to the Animal Manager and I'm going to click on Import. I'm going to paste all those rows in there's about 250 and hit the import button and it says it's going to let me know it's on the all tab i'm going to the not for sale tab um it's going to let us know when it's done it'll send us the email it okay. should take usually takes about a, a minute or so though and i'm just going to do a refresh and there they are okay so we've got uh 247 animals yeah and i always recommend that you know breeders go through when we do the import it's going to predict those traits based on the titles but sometimes depend if something is written in an unusual way or a way that it can't detect yeah. then it, it yeah. might test so you can kind of just you can scan through those and make sure everything is right and then if it's i decide to sell an adult i can just click on that ad and convert it to for sale from not for sale correct exactly let me okay because i sell i sell adults all the time it'll be helpful to just have them in the system because when i go to upgrade the genetics of that animal i could just go in and just click for sale that's right yeah from the and, and you know you can go and you can click on this gold link and we can go into that full edit ad page but yeah. what you can do is even quicker if we just click on the status right now it's not for sale we can just change it to for sale actually what we need to do is assign a price first to so click on price yeah. say it's you know thousand dollars and then we click on this and we just say force i want to make that a one at one stop action instead of having to do the two yeah. things so we'll we'll get that fixed but so for yeah when you say for sale it could ask you for a price but we'll say yeah from public active boom uh, <laughs> i'm in a demo account and it's dinging me it's saying i'm over limit so I can't I can't make that ad for sale uh, because yeah. it's a free account. So this is kind of interesting. 
this demo account is not a store it's just a user account and so last oh, yeah. year we up we upgraded the site so that anybody can have and manage animals in their system you don't have to have a store that's approved and all that so that's also cool because you know people breeders who are up and coming they may not, it's a good idea if they would go ahead and set their store a year or two in advance of when they need it but they don't have to yeah. in this way they could you know we can already have animal transfer and they're getting your animals that they purchased uh, into your system they yeah, and then once they start producing babies, then they could just they can just link the the parents. Mm -hmm. the ad. So let's continue, and uh, I'm still in this demo account because we already loaded this data in your account. But let's go over to as I sh I've shown in more detail in previous videos. I've shown how in order to use you click on the little beaker, and uh, this already has some other animals in here. But in order to set up your breeding plan, what you want to do is activate your breeders that you're going to use for that season. So that wow. way, if you have 500 animals, you're not going to have 500 animals to sort through. You know, there's 250 you care about. You can do that over here from within this system. We can say add breeder, and when we say we pick out one of these breeders that uh, you know we want to add them here, and then that's a male. So so there he is. So now We've added this orange room, yellow belly, lesser bongo head clown. Or you've got a lot of, your stuff has a lot of genetics. It's hard to read. But the thing that I've shown in previous videos also is when you have a lot of animals that you're going to bring in and, and put on your breeding plan, the trick you can use is in the animal manager, we can add a tag. So the, the way that um, animals are activated, when we activate an animal for the breeding plan, we add a tag to it. And that's how we keep track of which plans the animals are in so you can modify tags on the animal manager right here and it's breeders 2023 that's we add that tag like that and so there it is and now that animal's on the plan this uh 16 216 if we go over here and now he's been added if you want to add all of these to that plan you can select this box that chooses all the rows then yeah. kind of like in gmail you can say okay now pick all the pages then you go to bulk action change tag it's gray. That means some of them have the tag, some don't. If you click on it again, it's gold now. That means it's going to apply it to all of them. If you click it again, it would remove it and you could remove the tag, but we're going to save it. And that's going to add the tag to all those animals, which will bring them all into your breeding plan. And I went yeah. through that a little faster than I've done in the in previous yeah. videos. But yeah, now you can see we got uh, males, we got 208 females. So that's how we do. That's how we get the animals in. And then we start pairing them up. I'm not going to show that because I did. I go into detail. Yeah. On... Which video is that? I can go and check out the video. Yeah, I've done the. Well, it was the Tom video and then the okay. the Mark video. Both of those. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll done check. that. So you got two views. Now you like to look primarily. You organize by male, so you might want to. I mean, you could do either way, but basically, you go over here and click. So for this male, we click Add Dam, and then we choose from one of those females. Okay. And if you, you knew the number you could filter if you're like okay it's 301 once you choose the female then it shows you the pairing it hasn't saved it yet we're like hope okay, we want to make that public pretty soon you're going to be able to record pairings locks follicle size shed that kind of stuff here hmm. we can see we can see all the outcomes from the calculator from that pairing and if we're happy with it we just save it once we've added all your entire breeding plan we can click on outcomes and it will show us the aggregate outcomes from all those pairings, assuming all the females went during that season. Now to be clear, this isn't, this isn't Ozzy's plan. This is just some different data we have mixed in here. So don't yep. anybody watching, yep. don't, don't, don't assume this is all his stuff, but I'm just showing him, you know, in this case we have, you can tweak the group size. I mean, if your females are just powerhouses, maybe they're averaging eight eggs you can bump that up. And that's affecting that first column where it says expected count. We expect, yeah. you know, six and a half of this, five yeah. of those. Oh, that's pretty interesting. People can, this is where the wait list thing can kick in, where people will see you have a shot at producing something and they may say, hey, can I be waitlisted for this particular combination? Exactly. We're going to have the waitlist feature. It's going to be on, there'll be a button on your store page where they could add it. There'll be a button on these outcomes, whether they're on a, they might be looking at a particular clutch and seeing a row and over here we got a button to say waitlist this you know or it could be on okay. your aggregated combined outcomes like this this is actually not public yet we haven't yep. made this particular page publicly viewable but they can see your pairings and they can look at each pairing but not not the combined one yet um okay. but yeah there's there's so much potential in what we can do here we're about to add links in so just like with our calculator you know user might be like well what is that or maybe forget you forget the public you, you know you as a breeder you're like well i wonder what that might look like and has anybody produced it and what's the price on it? 
So we can add, we, we very soon will add a link here, just like with calculator, where it's going to go and show you the market results. Ah, uh, yeah, that would be really really helpful. And then we need uh, we need some market analytic. We could bring some price. There's all kinds of things. There's so much potential here. Yeah, there's there's a lot of data on Morph Market, and I think it'd be uh, nice to be able to access some of that data because I'm sure there's a ton of data on there because you have sales data, you have uh inquiry data so you could see uh, there's a wealth of information on there so within the real estate um industry costar um they do a lot of data analysis and people pay like 400 a month for like a costar subscription because they're getting data analysis for different markets you know they're getting population growth they're getting employment information there's like it's all kinds of all kinds of data and they basically they go out and they gather all of this data it's valuable information to you know real estate companies and investors um to help them make better decisions so yeah i'm sure you could i there's a ton of stuff you could do with this but yeah this is pretty fascinating I, one thing i know is that there are a lot of features on here that i'm not utilizing or taking full advantage of just because i'm i'm you know I'm an old guy, so technology has been moving so damn fast. I can't keep up. Uh, sometimes my head spins. But, you know, if I was a young guy starting out, I probably would spend a lot of time learning Morph Market inside and out because that would give me an advantage. And that's how you, if you're new and you're coming up and, and you're starting out, you're not as busy as some of the more established breeders and you could put more time and effort in to differentiate yourself and to maneuver and make smart decisions with your business to get an advantage mm -hmm. over some of the more established breeders and that's why i always encourage these new guys i'm like you know you you, you shouldn't be discouraged uh focusing on where you're at because you have some advantages that the bigger more established guys don't have and one of them is usually time so now we've gone back to your actual account and we have loaded all of your pairings in here those uh and there's actually 193 females paired to 45 males in this 22 plan now it's funny because you know you only had well okay for this import we did we hadn't added in any pictures for your adults yet it looks like some of these adults were animals that you might have you put in the system earlier on and then you chose to hold them back and we had the photos so the system identified that animal by the id and it 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 synced the data i actually i actually sold that snake that mojave tri strike um i think he's still i don't i, I don't think i've shipped him out he might be on payment plan but i mm -hmm. did post them so that's why and sometimes i'll take down an ad uh quite frequently i'll an animal will get really really big it'll be sitting and i'll decide to keep it so a couple other things you know within your breeding plan you can certainly do some sorting you know if you wanted to see you can even sort by image and sort sort the the animals with the images to the top there you can sort by yeah. the, the title you can change the visibility right now all these are private what we need to be able to do the way you can make them public is you click on them and click public and then you go back okay when i'm adding new offspring like for instance you have the pairing there right you have the breeding mm -hmm. plant you mm -hmm. have the male the female can i assign like a clutch number Mm -hmm. Do you have the records for any of these pairings that produce a clutch handy? And we could go do one right now. Let's do 17139. All right, cool. So I just punched in the ID and then it's going to show me. It looks like we only paired this female once. If I click on the pairing, we can check it out. And, uh, you know, this is where if we were back in 20, if we went back to 22, you know, this is where you could be entering some event data in as it, as you went along, and that could help you rotate your mails, you know, keep track of all that. We're actually actually about to add, um, start printing labels with QR codes, because that's really valuable to a lot of breeders to be able to scan that in their snake room, bring it up, and then, you know, then enter the data. But 16 possible outcomes. And so what we do, Ozzy, to take the next step, and we might rename this to make it more clear, but see at the bottom here, there's a button, create group, call the clutch the group, because we need to say clutch, but it's, it works for litters as well, so we call them groups. So I'm going to hit create group, and it's going to bring us over to the offspring group area. It's actually a whole other tab here on the sidebar. So yeah. now we're over here. Now, what's the group ID you want to use? I'm going to replace this automatically generated one. 2022-12. Yeah. Okay, there we go. We'll go ahead and make it public. Oh, by the way, you asked earlier, what it, can there be multiple males? And the answer is yes, because right here we've got that male that we had uploaded earlier. But if we yep. wanted to add a second sire, we could pick one out right here and assign uh, it. Ah, okay, cool.
Cool. Now, um, you want to tell me like how many good and bad, bad eggs, lay date, date of birth? We don't have to put it in, but that's all oh, we're able it to do. Was, uh, so she laid nine eggs. Yeah, all nine hatched. A breeder might not want to share how many bad eggs there were. They could always just put, so no one's going to be able to, no one's going to fact check that. But so nine good eggs. There we go. And then the lay date? 3.30. 22. Something people, breeders can, you know, users can do with these date values. And part of the reason why it's three separate fields, you can actually put in a kind of a rounded number. So if you just knew it was May, you didn't have to put the day in. I'm going to go ahead and save that just to lock it in. Yep. Um, and now it took us, it took us back, but I'm going to say review group. So we go right back here again. Okay. Now the fun part, I'm going to click edit. We're going to create the offspring. Have you already uploaded these animals in the morph market because they were for sale or summon them, summon them yep. Okay, yep. so tell tell me, we'll see if we can find. Okay, because there's two but there's two options here. I can assign offspring, which means you've already got the animal in the system, and we're just going to assign it. Or yep. if it's not in the system yet, we can create it right here. So let's assign first and see okay. if we can find it. You could just do two two dash zero seventy seven and just change the last digit because it's sequential. All right, see that is that one. Oh, I see. And you want to go to the next one then twenty two yep. zero seventy eight. Yep. There's another way we can do this. I want to just try something for fun. By the way, look, check it out. So I saved that and boom, it just loaded them right in here. That's awesome. Uh, I want to That's try awesome. something real, real quick though, that there's different ways to do things. So if we're in the animal manager, I'm going to go to all so that it doesn't matter if you sold it or not. I'm going to sort by animal ID. You probably could filter on 22-0 too. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Now you know, we're in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it was, it was, uh, all our offspring from 22-075 to 22-083. That was that clutch. Okay, cool. So yeah, seven five and seven six are not in here, but we have all the way to you said eighty three. Yeah, right there. Yep, starting okay. from yeah. Nope. So you can now, just by the way, we, those. This this column here, you can see we already made yep. the assignment. We can actually change it here, but we're gonna go so we could actually change this one like this, twenty twenty two dash twelve. And I want to make it so it pops up the option, like it knows that was an option. Um, yeah. But now let's try this one the other way. If we say, let's just select those two and see if we're able to do a bulk action group ID 202212, right? So I think we just did it. Why did you call it group ID instead of clutch ID? That's just because in our system, because we're servicing all the species and oh, we have okay. litters. But yep. it is, you know, in an ideal world, it, it, if it was if you were in a ball python context it would call it a clutch and so i'd like it to do that more later yeah. it's going to be clearer but uh for now we call them groups so here we are and uh i can search by group id so i can say 22-12 and so now we can bring up all you know those animals those are the ones that were in the system okay the ones that are sold yeah. now we got what seven we got two more which is great because i'm going to come back over here i'm going to refresh and it should now have those seven in this in here. We assigned those. We assigned a few of them here. We assigned more in the animal manager to show that. And now we're going to create offspring. We're going to create two females. Okay. And it took a guess at what the genetics were. It's not that the genetics were just this, but it's trying to minimize the work we have to do. So tell yeah. me about one of these females. In fact, give me the animal ID they're first. Both, yeah, they're both the same thing. So 22-075 is the animal ID. And they're mm -hmm. both orange dream desert ghost head pied so let's, okay orange dream desert yep. ghost head pied cool so it almost got it right yep so i'm gonna remove that and say desert oh and you know what else i want to do i'm going to click this refresh title and it updates the title for me off the off the genes nice. yeah and do the same thing now you know what would be cool just like when we assigned the, the breeders 2023 tag and you're able to click on it to kind of cycle through some states Right now, if you click on this, it removes it, but it'd be cool if it cycled through the different states that uh, that can be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can go through the potential and just select the combo that actually came out. Yeah, that would be a cool feature. So we got those in there. We added those two. They've all got the same sire and dam. You can actually customize sire. If this one was a different male, you know, for, than the other one, you can tweak yeah. that. Um, you know, some of these are sold, different states already. You've got the birth, just automatically got assigned. It looks like the birth from um, above didn't take somehow, uh, maybe because they were already in the system, uh, so it didn't want to override it. Yeah, it's some, yeah, there's it's some, tri some, some tricky idea. interactions there that, that we've made some decisions about, but we might revisit. Um, and that's it, and we can add our photos. Let's go and uh, save that and you can put some notes. Um, you can also have photos of the whole clutch if you had some of those, that looks pretty cool when you got all nine yeah. things together. But let's save yeah. it, and then let's, um, let's go check one of those out.
This is an animal that was already sold. Now we've got the sire and the dam, which don't have photos and it'll look better once they do. But we got also we've got the clutch. So check this out. The clutch we just put together, that's got a page too. And so uh, that's got the sire and dam and all the babies. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> when we write the code at Morph Market, it doesn't look cool. When we uh, put this online and you and everybody else starts entering the real animals in the system, we're like, wow, that's why we do this because this looks is yeah, showcasing your your animals. So Ozzy, did you hear about Morph Market projects yet? I heard about it, but I'm not I'm not too familiar with it. On Morph Market, we talk about projects. We're talking about everything prior to that animal becoming a listing. All the work you do in thinking about what you're gonna make, making your plan, pairing your animals, clutches, and then those pre-established offspring. Those are all projects. So as of, I don't know, a month or two ago, now on Morph Market, you can go over to, you can browse over to the, the index where we have all the traits. You're familiar with this. And there's another tab here called Projects Index. And so this lets us browse all the projects by breeders, which include those pairings and clutches and offspring. And it's all organized by category. We're going to see all ball python projects. I'm just going to click on that button. Now we're looking at all the projects, which includes pairings and clutches right now. Now we just created that, that group. Earlier we created a pairing and here's your pair. We made one of them pop Public. actually you created 200 pairings but only one of them we made public and so it's already shown up here so you're you're right now live on the website they can see this pairing from last year they can see all the possible outcomes and then we're gonna have that waitlist button right here in fact they can yeah. even get alerts on their they can get e they can set up searches to get alerts and so we could say actually we can custom this search here has all the features that it can from the normal listing search so we can say I want to see ball python projects and i want to see only those from ozzy boyds and right now you've only got one project here but there it is and i yeah. can if all i care about is your stuff now i can save this little heart here i can save a search i can say ozzy's projects and now i would find that under project searches there's that search i can click on the magnifying glass to run it so if i create a complicated search i want to see ozzy's pied you know desert ghost but the other cool thing is I can turn an alert on so that when, if you post something that matches, I get an email and a mobile notification. So oh, I immediately am just tracking with, with what you're doing. So people can right. really uh, stay on top of uh, what you're producing. And um, this is interesting. Yeah, cool stuff. The other thing you can do, Ozzy, is that you can actually save any search that is created. Like say you create a search over your stuff, you can give it a name and you can click share. It's going to copy the link and you can give that link to somebody else and in two clicks they'll be able to save your search so you can send that out to your followers the reason we don't see the offspring group we just created here it's not because it wasn't we did make it public but it that offspring group doesn't have a photo of the dam or the sire or the group there's no photo there we only have photo of the babies that's right now a constraint that we we're only showing projects that have a, a photo of one of those three things yeah. um, just to keep it more exciting but yeah it's got all the keyword search genes and traits, even payment options that you can filter on in the projects. Cool. So Ozzy, I said at the beginning of this uh, video, one thing I really appreciate is how much content you've put out there to help people. I mean, you've got a, a website with blogs, you've got a lot of content on YouTube um, to inspire, educate, and help others grow in the community. And uh, part of that, I don't, you know, some of those are under your millionaire snake breeder series, um, yeah. but you've got stuff about breeding plans and how to build a collection, how to price animals, setting templates, temperatures um and then i know you've got a patreon so i mean as if you haven't done enough already now you got a patreon with even more stuff so i just wanted to let people know about that uh, that they can go check that out as well yeah cool definitely uh check out the patreon we we've been talking about uh all kinds of stuff taxes real estate investing how to leverage your your little hobby to actually create and develop generational wealth um how to structure your business you know lower your taxes and take advantage of uh, uh write-offs that you're entitled to so it's a lot of good information on there we talk about a lot of stuff and then you know the market everybody's talking about the recession and stuff like that um i put out an article in may regarding the market and we then had a live discussing that blog post which is pretty interesting so some of that stuff i don't make that like public a lot of it is 
some really, really uh, good information and intel and letting people know exactly what I'm doing, how I'm pivoting to take mm -hmm. advantage of the current market cycle. And it's crazy because I was predicting, I was saying that we're approaching that crash phase or the slowdown. And that was in May. And then in September, it was like a light switch. And I'm utilizing, I'm doing a live next week utilizing morph market and showing people what's really going on with the market people like to look at the macro mm -hmm. but kind of use morph market to kind of dig deep and so i'm going to be doing a live next week on my patreon mm -hmm. and giving people an update on what trends i'm seeing and what my predictions are for you know the coming months so it's fascinating i love it like i I love the market cycles. I love all aspects of this hobby. It's pretty interesting to me. And I think, you know, if people are in the right mindset, they'll be able to take advantage of any situation. That sounds really interesting. Uh, yeah, people like to, the, the most common thing I see on Facebook is people like to screenshot how many ball pythons are listed for sale right now today on Morph Market and like yep. use that as, a, as a, launching, a launching point to just basically say that there's too many, the industry is going to die, you know, and that's like, such a surf superficial analysis like I mean, it's not even an analysis you know what i mean there's like so many levels deeper that you got to go it doesn't answer well yes. how many were there last year well how many are selling what's the turnover rate or the price is doing like all yeah. that stuff yeah there's there's so much more to it and so Tuesday, I'm gonna dig deeper into that, and I have some uh, I have some pretty interesting uh, data that I'm gonna share and and show people on my Patreon. Again, it's just all about information sharing, keeping people uh, grounded, keep keeping people inspired, and teaching them how to navigate and take advantage of of every market situation. Like now is a great time to be building your collections. There's mm -hmm. plenty of inventory out there, and you can get some good prices. <laughs> What's well, what? That's what Buffett says, right? That's like maybe his most quoted line when. You know, yeah. be be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when yeah. others are greedy. Exactly. So if people are being fearful, then that's the time to buy in. Yeah, exactly. And that, and that, in essence, that's what I kind of describe in my uh, market cycle blog. I mean, I, I did that blog post years ago, too, on my website, um, but I kind of refreshed it on my Patreon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun stuff, man. I enjoy it. I get a kick out of it. It's uh it's almost like a game. Even if this video isn't out until after your your talk, that video that information will be there on your Patreon that they could sign up and access. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, John. This yeah, was keep, fun. Good work, man. Mm -hmm.